Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, Bentleys. Who among us hasn't dreamt of hitting the road behind the wheel of a luxury car? I know I have. Although a Rolls-Royce Cullinan would be my car of choice. So if you were promised that your dreams could become a reality without parting with your life savings, would you jump? Or would something deep down tell you nothing in life is for Mahala? Here's Masa. The exhilaration of getting behind the wheel of a luxury car, the precision engineering, the sleek lines of cutting edge design, high performance, high status. I'm looking at 30 to 50 of my very good friends all driving these stunning cars and everyone saying the deals are working. It's an exclusive club and a valuable one. The South African luxury car market is worth 1.3 billion rand annually. They asked me what's my preferable car, would I want to drive? I said, if you have a Mustang, I don't mind, and I'll drive a Mustang. For more than 150 fanatics, it was a deal too good to resist. The chance to drive a sports car at a fraction of the cost of owning one. And this is how it works. To join the club, a car is bought with finance from a lender, but the price is inflated. That car then gets shared among other members of the scheme who've also contributed vehicles to the pool. The members get to drive one of these luxury models for six months at a time. But why inflate the cost? Well, the difference between the actual price and what was borrowed is, surprise, surprise, handed to the people who dreamt up the scheme. They then pay themselves, as well as the car's installments. Yes, how it got off the ground is a mystery to us too. So when I looked at it, it looked and smelled like a Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is only able to pay out its investors by constantly luring new ones for a steady supply of fresh cash to stay afloat. Those in first share the spoils from the newbies. Glenda Paul is an investigator representing most of the people taken for a ride in the scam. At its center is a company called ANA Dealings. This entire scheme was set up by word of mouth. Apparently, ANA Dealings approached a, a group of agents. These agents were sold the concept and they approached friends, families, and they used this platform in order to sell the investment to the investors. In other words, the first people recruited were those who most trusted the agents. We'll hear more about them a little later. First though, we need to introduce Ari van der Berg, head honcho at a a Dealings. Using five agents, including a social media bodybuilding star and an Afrikaans pop sensation to provide the prospects, Ari promised his investors the ride of their lives. And Sal, his agents did. A whopping 160 million rands worth, amounting to nearly 20% of the entire annual luxury vehicle market in South Africa. I was surprised to see you going to get a new car. Oh my word! That excited voice belongs to Cordelia Potrita, a popular singer whose public profile made her the perfect salesperson. We'll hear from her a little later. A lot of them trusted these individuals because they'd known them for so long and they rely on the goodwill of the person telling them or selling them the scheme. And trust is important in a scheme this complicated. Let's return to our earlier explanation. The participants who had to have a clean credit record signed a flimsy contract with a a Dealings, taking out finance on a new car. We already know the price was loaded. So a car worth a million rand, for example, would be financed for half a million more. This was done by simply inflating the price on the finance deal. The 500,000 rand balance that the investor or member is nonetheless indebted for becomes a cashback payment to Ari and his agents. Some of the cash is used to pay the installments, the rest, they pocket. But here's the kicker. 
the member never takes possession of the car. Ari does, adding some vehicles to the pool, allegedly renting out the others in a separate scheme. It looked so promising and it looked so great to all of us, but I sat and watched what was going on before I decided to jump in. Entrepreneur Marlene Pinto got wind of the scheme through her social circle. Before you went into this deal, you assessed it and analyzed it over six months. Correct. And then you get a brand new shiny Maserati. I was shocked because I didn't realize they had these kind of cars in the footprint. And how much are you paying for this? Because it wasn't the car I purchased, I didn't pay for it at all. That would also made this whole um, idea so desirable for everybody. Yeah. Hey. Remember Ari was paying the car installments? Marlene financed two high-end BMWs through the scheme. Their real collective value was just over 3 million rand. And for a while, she got to drive a 6 million rand Maserati. I know what she must be thinking. Did they really think that they were going to drive these kinds of cars for free? It's a question all the more mystifying when you consider many of the members wouldn't have a paycheck to match the significant installments. So for the scheme to work, that little complication had to be papered over. Put more bluntly, their income and expenses were doctored. Somebody had to have been involved on the inside to approve these deals because your disposal income can only be 30% of your financing. And a lot of people were earning salaries of 40,000 Rand and getting financed for vehicles for 29,000 Rand. That's a repayment of 75% of earnings. This member who didn't want us to show his face has a regular day job with a reasonable salary. He's divorced and doesn't own a house. His credit application reflected as much. Yet on the system where it eventually ended up, a banking back-end system showed an income of two and a half times his pay, that he's married and owns a two million rand house. ANA used Bruma Nissan as well as Cruisen Motors in Umhlanga as two of their dealers of choice. Both deny loading the sale price on their cars. Bruma Nissan showed us that credit applications were captured accurately and then passed on to the bank. So at what point exactly was the information doctored? Confused? Who wouldn't be with a scheme this complex? Let's break it down. Ari and his agent source a car from one of the dealerships. A prospective member applies for finance, but as we know, the price is inflated and the credit info manipulated. And hey presto, the door is open to a car the member couldn't otherwise afford. And our investigation suggests that doctoring happens beyond the dealership. A handful of the cars were financed by major banks, the majority by an independent company called Marquee Finance. A Marquee Finance insider told us an executive at the company approved all applications from a a dealings. That executive was head of underwriting, Marcel Petersa, the man who makes the ultimate call on whether to finance or not. Despite admitting to being fired over the allegations, he denied any wrongdoing. He did admit, though, to having a lifelong friendship with an ANA dealings agent. While the going was good, the deals were streaming in. And that brings us back to Cordelia, one of Ari's trusted agents and not shy of the hard sell. It's much like on my car to do, because I see it make a difference so many people in their lives. We had serious questions for Cordelia, but when we called, she claimed innocence. I didn't understand 100% how this worked. I can see now they were just using people with connections and make you believe like this is a good deal. So some of my best friends, I told them about this, and they had meetings with this Ari Oak, who was the owner of this dealings. Yet, here's a little excerpt from a very long voice note to a potential member, which suggests Cordelia knew precisely how the scheme worked. 
So die kar word gefinansier, hulle sien het as een normale transaksie tussen jou en die bank, dit is jou voertuig en hulle sien dat jy die verantwoordelike een is vir die payment, jy teken dit, jy aanvaard dit, maar die al ding is, is ons betaal elke maand, betaal Arri, wie het voor die aftrek order afgang, elke maand in jou rekening in. I have voice notes of you, Cordelia, saying to people what a great thing this is. You, you, it, you, a, it is a great thing. And I'm, it's I'm a great thing. A scam is a great thing. Could, what, what responsibility do you need me to take then? What must, what must I do for you guys? You don't read for because us. I, it's about the, the many, many people that you've roped into no, the scam. No, 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 you, you know, know that this thing is... You are an no, agent no, for no, a scam. No, I know what you're trying You are an to agent. Know. I'm not trying then anything. Everyone, except the dealerships, were ducking and diving, washing their hands of any wrongdoing. Despite the evidence, we heard Cordelia refusing to admit that she was involved. And Jean-André Bietre, another agent, did not want to talk to us because he claims a a dealings ruined his life. But what about the pair's victims? As Ponzi's inevitably do, the whole scheme collapsed in February when the agents didn't recruit enough people to fund the growing pool of repayments, commissions, and cars. Simply put, ANA dealings ran out of money. Jeanre sent a message out to a few of us, notifying us that their bank accounts had been frozen and we shouldn't worry about anything, that the money would be paid over. Ari went quiet, and because he no longer paid the installments on the victim's finance vehicles as he promised, the banks are now going after the victims of the scheme. After all, the cars were financed in their names. My life has actually been turned right upside down. I actually don't even know what to do. Everything was a lie. Most of the victims are liable for repayments between 50 and 90,000 rand a month. 95% of the people have stopped all their debit orders. People are not paying their bonds, trying to pay a little bit to the bank. Marquis Finance declined to talk to us, citing internal investigations. Ari sent us a letter through his lawyers, saying he's not talking. What lessons have you learned? When something is too good to be true, definitely, I don't follow the pack. This is going to change people's lives in a negative way forever. Yep.